does, instantly goes for the move through Hairpin 1, and now Gus Lawrence gets squeezed onto the side by Atkins. <laughs> Fights back, holds on to P number 2 now, but this... <laughs> Again, a big hello to everyone tuning in on the live chat. Gus Lawrence and Kalai Atkins on row number one. Marcus Luzio and Harry Burgoyne Jr. on row two. Sam Shaw and Caden McQueen on row number three. Marcus Littlewood and Louis Johnson Cool. They'll go from row four. Josh Agenbar and Alex Duncan round out the top ten. They go from row five. Alistair Cresswell and Harry Cottrell, they round out the top twelve on row number six. Luke Taylor and Ewan Thomas are up next, followed by James Pashley and Oliver Greetham, Michael Rapsey and Chris Bingham on row number nine. The final two rows, Callum Tanner and Jack Nettleship rounding out the top 20. 21 drivers in this one. Josh Palfreyman rounds that one out. He starts all on his own on row number 11. Lawrence in the number one cart. Atkins in the number seven. Into the tram lines. Lights are out. No, no they're, they're not. not. False start. That was Kali Atkins in a whole heap of hurry trying to get away and a little bit too much. Exactly. Right. Second time of asking. Actual karting. Actual That's karting. That's the name of the game here, boys and girls. Actual karting. Four wheels, two strokes, smell, smoke, Perfect. racing. Here we go. Into the tram lines. Hands are going up. Littlewood with the hand up, but it looks good. And no, it's, it's not. not good. Now, it looked okay from that angle. Obviously, that was one angle. The, I... the Trent Valley Kart Club here have got about 17,000 angles of the start-finish no, line. This is where Gus Lawrence and Kyle Atkin, now they need to really, really behave themselves. Because if they get stopped, they get one more opportunity, yeah. and then they could get sent to the back of the grid. Yeah. So, so uh, they've got to be very, very careful in these next few moments. Got so let's to be see, careful. Got let's to see be what careful. happens. So, once they, again, so third time of asking. They are now crawling to the yeah. line. They look like a pack of walkers off The Walking Dead or something like that, just shuffling, shuffling towards the start-finish line. Yes. So, here we go. I've got no idea what you're on about, but anyway. Into the tram lines they go. It's looking a little bit uh -oh. out of shape. That's another false start. Right. Okay. So I suspect something may happen here, folks. They may get one more attempt. What? I tell you, no, they, no, will, no, no, they shall not. Red, red flag's coming out. So there's race director. Oh, yeah, he's on his way. Us. Crucially, he hasn't got his clipboard. Always so striding with a purpose. Yeah. So this is, this going is to just going to be a telling off. A slap on the wrist, yes. as it were. Yes. There's Dan Ashton. Just guide them into position. Now, here we go. This is where they play shut up and listen. Mm. Their job is to shut up and listen, as Nigel Edwards now tells them. Oh, don't protest. No, 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 no. Don't <laughs> Augustus, fight back. Augustus, don't, don't fight protest. back. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, uh, yeah, you, you've got to listen at this point now. And he's just, like I say, Nigel Edwards, race rate, again, just nod the head, smile and wave, smile effectively. And wave, smile and wave. And now uh, Kalai's there with his hasn't said a word. Because Kalai's trying to get into Gus's head. Yeah. Kalai's trying to get that advantage off the start. He's standing back. Gus is, fair play to Gus. Fair, fair play, Gus. That's, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, you get back in your car. Like. Get in your go kart, do your job. Yeah. And now he looks across at Kalai Atkins, and Kalai Atkins is like, Do you know what? Is this, that's 1 0, Kalai Atkins. Yeah. Or do if, they get one more lap? No, they'll, they'll go. <laughs> the idea is you go. You've got yeah. half a lap to get yourselves into position. Everyone starts. That's a good start, sign. But, you know, this is it's great, great, you know. Let's see what happens. Of course, I could be completely wrong. Gus Lawrence could ace the start and clear off and win by 10 seconds. Oh, yeah. What effect has it had? Now they are in lockstep to the start line. Lights are out. Now they're off and racing. Oh, Kalai Atkins trying to squeeze Gus Lawrence, but he gets squeezed out. Oh. Lawrence makes a perfect getaway. Henry Baudet, what are you talking about? Gus Lawrence had it all in hand. He was just teasing that frustration. He leads by 10 cart lengths before they get to turn number four. Kalai Atkins is stranded down in third place oh with Marcus Lutzio with the P2. Oh, and that's one of the Argenti carts. Stephen Duncan for a wild ride. Oh, and that just shows when these carts go off tilter how oh, hard it is to maintain control. And the fact that he got control of that cart there was unbelievable. I suspect that will have shaken up one or two drivers further in the pack 
back as well. Slippery surface flags are out actually going into Bobby Game Corner. This is interesting. So keep an eye at them as they make their way through. I'm not sure what's happened, but there is slippery surface flags out. And there's water. There's water on the track. Somebody has, someone's radiator has uh, decided to deposit its contents all over the circuit. I can't see it raining. We're not getting any word from the camera crew out on circuit that it is raining. It's only that one corner. Now, Look oh at that. Where did that come from? That is a pipe that's burst. That's a pipe a pipe's burst. Well, the the water is just falling onto the circuit. I'm not uh, How on earth that's happened? Incredible. But Never ever seen that before. Well, that's going to throw the cat amongst the pigeons. What else can this be can they throw at the Senior X30 field? And of course, now Gus Lawrence is going to be the first driver to encounter this. Yes, he Tommy is. Tommy Vanderstroys. Hello, Tommy. How are you doing? Good to see you on the live stream. Uh, let's have a little look. Now, it is coming into... There it is. And it's just going to its gonna come down into the middle of the circuit if it keeps going that way as they enter into the final... Uh, well, the, the start of the, uh, the Mike Wilson complex. Uh, well, it's not making any issues at the moment, but that could become a question mark later on in this race. Thus far, though, Gus Lawrence is leading the way. The gap's seven tenths of a second, but we've seen this. The gap, you, it's difficult to maintain it because the slipstream works well here. And Atkins and Luzio are using that slipstream to full advantage. But going junior, first year in juniors, currently right seniors. now, first year in seniors, I should say, uh, is P4, fastest lap of the race, and is hunting down Luzio and Calloway Atkins here. Well, I've got to say, uh, every single one of the top four or five, five or six drivers in this race has had somebody on the online chat saying, uh, you know, they think they're going to win. They think they're going to win. Um, but uh, anyone can do it. Kalai Atkins back into P2. Lawrence using that frustration to his advantage. You know, I thought it was getting elected. Now Kalai Atkins has got to try and hunt him down. We have not had any, you know, the drivers now all know that water is there. Yeah. We're not going to see... We're, we're not going to see anyone diving at the inside going into the start of the Mike Wilson oh, yeah. complex. <laughs> right, that uh, very bad day. There's a move back in the back. That's one of the MDL Motorsport drivers. That was Jack Nettleship, who's already gone from 20th up to 10th and now put Jack Nettleship into P9. Well, here we go. As Luzio dies to the inside of Atkins. That's for P2. So that battle still rages on. They've got to be careful, though, because that is going to allow Lawrence to break away. The gap has come down even more. It's about half a second now between the top two. And there you can see the train that's starting to form now further back. Second all the way down to P7. Then you've got the next group led by Agenbar, Cottrell, Nettleship, McQueen. Cade McQueen has not had a good start in this one. He has dropped down to P11. I... Caden has done a little bit of racing over the winter, but he hasn't done too much. Alex Duncan and Callum Tanner have retired. Duncan uh, probably needing a new change of uh, overalls after that mm. incredible moment on the first lap. Here's the rest of the field. Sam Shaw putting in uh, the fastest lap of the race. So what we have, we have Lawrence being chased down by one Dan Holland racing cart, one Crop Promotions cart, one Mick Barrett racing cart, one member of the Jade racing team, and two drivers from Premium Karting. And uh, the PF International driver, Gus Lawrence, keeping them all at bay at the moment. Wow. We've got Agenbar, 8th, Cottrell, 9th, Nettleship, 10th, then Pashley, McQueen, Taylor, Rapsy, oh. Greetham, Bingham, Thomas, uh, Palfreyman, and Cresswell. One of the premium kartings going off wide there. That water has stayed where it is. It looks okay. I can see some uh, squeegee mops getting sorted out, ready to try and clear that as best as possible before the next race. Ten minutes remaining on this one, so no concerns from these drivers. They're absolutely flat out as Louis Johnson cool now, fastest lap of the race. Cool as a cucumber and cool by name. He's there in P7 nice. and is working well, fighting through this field. He is up one position from his starting spot of P8. He's at the back of this train, yeah. but nonetheless, he has got the main slipstream of all of them in front of him. And Sam sure. Shaw makes the move on Harry Burgoyne Jr. Now, Harry, you're playing with the big boys now. And uh, Harry, I think, would be well advised to just maybe settle back in and just sit. If you know, Give Sam a lap to see if he is quick enough to tow you up to Kalai Atkins, Marcus Luzio. Gus Lawrence's lead has remained three quarters of a second for the last 
three or four laps. We're completing lap number five now. After my comments after the uh, aborted start, have, what, what's the phrase? Have not aged well. No, they've not. <laughs> because Lawrence has led by the three quarters of a second since turn three on the opening lap of the race. And we're now on lap seven, still with nine minutes to go. But Lucio and Atkins have been working together and they cannot catch, they cannot catch uh, the leader. There goes Burgoyne Jr., who has decided not to follow Sam Shaw anymore and thinks that he is quick enough to lead that following... Well, now, they've now both Burgoyne Jr., Shaw, oh. Johnson, Cool, all the premium karting team holding their collective breath and Littlewood have now been dropped from... Just Lucio and Atkins, second and third, chasing Lawrence. Yes, indeed. Well, Gus Lawrence is just driving away. Last year's champion, of course, in Senior X30 and a familiar face at the Paul Fletcher International Raceway. The team based here and is, well, uh, I think he's got the circuit really kind of drawn on every single yeah. part of his body. He knows no, exactly no, no. the best way around this track, exactly, really, doesn't exactly. he? And, uh, you know, ah, now for the first time Ooh. in seven laps, the gap has come down. Lucio and Atkins trim two tenths of a second. Oh, you say trim? Off. That's a chunk. Well, as it, much as two tenths of a second is, in, in, it's, well, you, you are right, Anthony, in, in this sort of like parlance, in, in this situation, it is. And now they've got the bit between their teeth. The gap is down to less than four tenths of a second. Whoa. Now Lutzio and Atkins will get a bit of a toe from Lawrence, both on the back straight and on the next straight. So by the time they get to the banking next time around, Lutzio and Atkins are going to be within a cart length of the race leader. Yeah. Mark my words. Yeah, the slipstream down the start-finish straight really plays into effect here. I mean, watch how closely they'll be on that rear bumper, like you say, as they go under the bridge. It really kicks in in the second half of the straight. Watch it now. So they go across the line. It's there. Three tenths of a second. Watch it through, through this section here. It's through here that it really closes up. And now, look at them now. Latched onto the back, really. They've Marcus super Lamp. closed it. Marcus, look, Marcus looks here. Yep. Uh, you will notice, ladies and gentlemen, um, as they come around, they come around Bobby Game Corner, you will see several marshals here at Pierre International and Head Marshal Glenn Griffiths actively drying the circuit during the race. Right. To avoid, to, to prevent that water from potentially moving on to the racing line and creating a situation. You couldn't pay, I mean, these marshals, they give up their weekends generally for expenses and, and, and only. Yeah. You could not pay me enough to stand. Watch them now. Watch them now at the inside. There they are, just flashing the screen. They're there, trying to get that water off the racing line to prevent a dangerous situation while 20 of the country's best senior X30 drivers whiz past them at over 70 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, that's the draft that we're talking about there. Look how much it closed up. It was two cart lengths, now it's not even a cart length between the two of them. It is a battle of three of them now. It's not a group of one and two. It's one group of three. Lutzio checks over the shoulder to try and see if he can maintain the momentum, and he does. Instantly goes for the move through hairpin one, and now Gus Lawrence gets squeezed onto the side by Atkins. <laughs> Fights back, holds on to P number two now, but this battle is not over. Three and a half minutes to go, plus that one lap. Marcus Lutzio leads the way from Gus Lawrence. Atkins still there in third, but for how much longer? Looks at the inside, but I think he just... Oh, uh, oh no, he does go for it. What a move. Uh, that was... Uh well, Atkins, I'm not sure why, why Lawrence ran wide there, but he obviously did run wide. And suddenly, well, it took them 11 minutes to suddenly get all together and then three corners to spread apart again. But the order is completely different. Warning for Gus Lawrence. Mm. That was maybe uh, defending too harshly uh, against Atkins as Atkins tried to follow him through going up into the second hairpin last time around. Now Atkins has caught Lutzio again. Oh, look how quickly that closed up. Has Kalai Atkins been playing a little game with his rivals? Has he really got the extra pace in that Croc Promotions Mad Croc chassis that can win this race? Lawrence has dropped back. Lawrence has dropped back to over a second adrift. He's going to gain some of that back when, not if, but when Atkins makes his move on Lutzio. 
Dan Holland Racing, Leeds Crop Promotions, Leeds PF International, Leeds Mick Barrett Racing, Leeds Premium Karting, Leeds the Jade Racing Team. Nettleship, the MDL Motorsport Team, is now up into eighth position. There he goes, the first driver not in the chasing pack. When will Atkins make his move? Two oh, minutes to go. That was, was that a penalty? Number seven, Atkins, Cali Atkins in second place, receives a five second time penalty. And well, that is drama in this race. There is only a couple of minutes left and well, Atkins sees, well, he's not seen it yet. He'll see it this time around and he's actually taken the lead. Oh, so Atkins word. has taken the lead. But he's got that five-second time penalty. Uh, I, we, okay, you could say that now. Coming into Bobby Game Corner, Gus Lawrence didn't just outbreak himself and run wide. He was given an assist. And instantly a five-second penalty has been applied. Lawrence back to second. Lutzio down to third. Well, it's Lawrence leading, even though Atkins leads on the road. Lutzio, Burgoyne Jr., fourth, third on the road. Then it, uh, sorry, fourth in the road, third in the standings. Then it's Sam Shaw, Marcus Littlewood, Louis Johnson Corn, Nettleship, Cottrell. Where does that five seconds, that five second penalty puts Kali Atkins out of the top 10. We've got one minute to go, Anthony. Here comes Burgoyne Jr. for what is effectively second position at the second hairpin, but Lutzio holds on. The, the ball is back squarely in Gus Lawrence's court. It really is here now as they go in through Bobby Game Corner. The incident in quest or the corner in question that brought out this penalty. And well, again, you've got to be thinking what, are go what is going through these drivers' minds right now because Gus Lawrence, like you say, technically leading the way. The battle behind between Luzio Burgoyne Jr. is raging on. It's still kicking off further back there as well oh, as Marcus yes. Littlewood getting squeezed by Sam Shaw on the start finish train. Again, he dies back down the inside through the banking there as they fight further back in the field. But eyes on who's going to come this, who's going to finish in second place here? Because is it going to be Luzio or is it going to be Burgoyne Jr.? Luzio looks over the corner just to see what is Burgoyne Jr. doing. Absolutely nothing for the time being. Now, of course, for those of you watching at home, Antti and I, we see incidents on the screen. But because the race is in progress and because this commentary is going out to the circuit, we do not comment on incidents that we see. However, the penalty has been applied by the race director. We could both say that it was for that incident down at uh, Bobby Game Corner where Gus Lawrence seemed to just run very wide all of his own accord just as Kyle Atkins passed him. Well, that wasn't the case. Uh, this is a new system this year where penalties are applied in race that allows us to explain to you, the viewer, what has gone on. Now, whether that could be appealable afterwards, I do not know. Uh, Marcus Luzio getting passed around the outside by Harry Burgoyne Jr. No, he isn't. He holds on. Burgoyne Jr. sent one high, wide and handsome on the banking that time. This is the final lap. Atkins leads on the road, but it's Gus Lawrence leading after penalties have been applied. Harry Burgoyne Jr. and Marcus Luzio, wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact, they're coming in for the second hairpin. This is for second place overall, and will this bring Louis Johnson cool into play? The answer is, at the moment, yes, they're running out of corners, and don't forget there's water on the inside going in to the Mike Wilson complex. Nettle ship to the inside. Littlewood and Sam Shaw wheel to wheel. The checkered flag is out, however. Kalai Atkins wins on the road, but it's Gus Lawrence who wins in all eventuality with Harry Burgoyne Jr. second and Marcus Luzio on the podium. Louis Johnson cool finishes fourth. Marcus Littlewood, well, that battle on the last lap Marcus Littlewood finishes 5.2 seconds behind Kalai Atkins. So after Kalai's penalty is applied, and assuming the penalty sticks and is not overturned, Kalai Atkins effectively will finish fifth. Marcus Littlewood in sixth, Jack Nettleship in seventh, Sam Shaw in eighth, Caden McQueen in ninth. Obviously the results on your screen haven't had the penalties applied yet. Might get to... Uh, a little bit confusing. So Atkins will finish fifth.
Littlewood 6, then Nettleship, Sam Shaw, Caden McQueen, Josh Agambar, James Pashley in 11th, Michael Rapsey 12th, Harry Cottrell 13th, then Christopher Bingham, Ewan Thomas, Oliver Greetham, and Luke Taylor, the final finisher. Drama in senior.